Thank you, Lord. I was the dirtiest. I did everything you can name. I drink. I used to say I didn't turn tricks, but I was a call girl because I had the same trick. Amen. Come on, I ain't not going to sit up here and be pretty. I'm going to tell the truth. So that way, God can get the glory. That man said, so you would never, ever see the age of 30. He gave me double for my trouble. 61 be 62. Could not read. Could not write. Could not spell. Had low self-esteem all my life. Somebody say, but God. God used the darkness of the darkness and the lowest of the love to raise them up. Hallelujah. I ain't always looked it like this. I ain't always looked it like this. But I had a desire to change. I had a desire to clean up my mind, to clean up my body, to clean up my thought. Hallelujah. In the midst of me out there on drugs, I call it hepatitis C. It's a disease that go through the body. And now let me tell you how God got sense of human. Don't cry Marcy and don't cry my mother because they real sensitive. But this is a testimony how good God is. So I had hepatitis C. So I got saved in 96. So God got a sense of humor. He didn't tell me I had liver damage in 98. Why not? Because he just told me in 96 I'd have kept being in food. It kept on getting high. But so anyway, I'm going to fast forward. I'm going to go real fast. So anyway, I called hepatitis C in 98. That's when your liver shut off and all that stuff. And I went to the doctor, got this little cream and all that. And so I took it for six months. And they said, the cream didn't work. So they said, you got six months to live. Six and age of the crying. I said, sorry, I believe the report of the Lord. Amen. Come on, come on, because you got to speak. You got to speak. You got to speak to that. Never line up with the word of God. So I kept on saying, I believe I'm here, I believe I'm here, I believe I'm here. They gave me six months to live. Six months to live. Six months. And that was in 98. Follow me on. Follow me on. Follow me on. That was in 98. Follow me. So they said, you can't heal the liver, we can't do it. But I know a man named Jesus, amen. So I begin to just tell God, I thank you for a new liver. I thank you for a new liver. I thank you for a new liver. I just kept on, I just kept on telling them, thank you. It's something about God when you keep telling them, thank you for what he about to do. So anyway, about six months ago, my liver went all out of whack and my steam and it was getting too high and they said it was about to shut down anyway. So I just kept on, kept on, believe God, believe God. Because when you faithful, God going to do what he said he's going to do. So anyway, Pastor Greg, that's my brother. He said, they got some livers, some liver pills for $1,000. Yeah. So that's $94,000 that little old me need. So I couldn't tell everybody my testimony because some people can't believe God. So they said, do you believe your insurance people? Go get you 95000 No, I don't, but I believe he will. Yeah. I believe he the Lord of Lord. Come on. So anyway, I just waited. I waited to fast forward. It was 16 years. 16 years, and I still say, God, I believe you to heal me. I believe you to heal me. Because he said, no weapon form against this body shall prosper. And I figured like this, if he didn't let me die when I had the needle in one hand, in the pipe in the other hand, in the beer in the other hand, why would he not let me die now? Hey, hallelujah. He wouldn't let me die. I'm on the field for the Lord. I'm running for the Lord. I'm winning souls for God. Hallelujah. So anyway, they got the pills for $1,000. So my insurance sent it down. They rejected me six months ago. So I said, I'll send it back to the sender. See, they had the right address, but they had the wrong girl. Amen. They had the wrong person. Because I'm a faith believer. I believe God for anything. So they said, we can't give her 95000 So the nurse said, you no, no, I just believe God. God got everything I need. So they called me back. And say, we gave you the stuff for 95000 So look at the girl with the new liver. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
my mother said. When people get saved, they get sick. And no, no, no. What about I did this in my drug addiction and God is a keeper. Hallelujah. So anyway, I got to pills, 95,000. I kept saying 60,000. My brother said 90,000. So we went on the screen. There was 95,000. Thousand dollars. I don't know where the money come from. I don't care where it come from. But I know God spoke to somebody. So evangelist Gwenny Love can have a new letter. Amen. So let's keep the story. I started my pills the twenty third. Hallelujah. Now, now, now. If he gave me ninety thousand, ninety five thousand, just think what he'll do next. Come on. I didn't complain. I didn't mumber, I didn't come, all I said, God, I thank you for a new liver. God, I thank you for a new liver. God, I thank you for a liver. Because in 96, when I was coming out for drugs, I laid on the floor, spitting up blood. I said, God, if you save me, I'll serve you. It's 20 years later, because Bridget was three, and she's 23. Excuse me for telling your age, baby. But anyway, I said, God, I will serve you to the day I die. Now, blood came out my nose. Blood came out. But all I say, God, I thank you that you didn't let me die when I was in my sins. He fixed my liver. He gave me a new liver. Now, I could have died. I could have died. But God. And God honors faithfulness. I didn't have a penny when I got saved. I didn't have no clothes. I didn't have no shoes. But I had a song. Lord, I'm running. Yeah. Running for Jesus. Trying to make a hundred. See, that's what I sound when I didn't have no clothes. Just do it. I didn't have no clothes. But I had so much peace. My sister Marcy wouldn't send me a dollar. And that was good for me to get to know Jesus. Come on, sometimes your bad turn out for your good. Today, 
I still had trials. I still had tribulation. But I know a man can do everything but fail. When I was going through, I used to say, God, why do I go through so much? And then I thought about the book of Job. How Job went through everything. But now I understand that all I went through is for him to get the glory. Because he sent me back in prison so people could say that nothing Gwenny Love, the Gwenny Love that had five penitentiary numbers, see when they look at me and see what the Lord has done, they know he can do it for them, them, them. He no respect the person. I love God today. And I'm going to run on to see what the end going to be. I'm going to run. I'm going to run. I respect God. I obey God. I honor God. I fear God. I reverence God. Because when you love me, say, do my commandments. I don't care what people think about me. I don't care what people think about me. Because I want to be the lady that said, she did not have sex until she got married. I want to be the witness. I want to be the role model. That whenever he sent me, he going to get a good thing. Ha! I'm moving on. Let me pray. I just had to say that. For single ladies to get bored, when you fall in love with Jesus, and you know Jesus, and you got a love for Jesus, and you got a home for Jesus, ain't nothing, nothing a man can do. Because I got God. I got everything when I got Jesus. Really, I got all I need when I got Jesus. Hallelujah. I got all I need. And I was in sin 16 years ago with a man. But I made a decision. I'd rather have you than him. See, because the man ain't going to be there when you really need him. The man ain't going to be there. But he will. He will. I want somebody to love God first. See, he need to lead me. I ain't leading him. I'm too old to lead something. Says Minister Carice. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm glad to be a testimony. I'm glad that all I went through, I'm still here. I'm still here. But God knows. One thing I know God do know. He know who's for him and who love him. I tell everybody, you love church, you miss church. But see, nobody told me to close the dope house. So why should I close the hope house? Come on. Come on. It's healing in the house. It's deliverance in the house. My soul get free when I'm in the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, when I was shooting dope, nobody say stop, Gwenny right. Love. Right. Where's the next spot, Gwenny right. Love? Right. So I tell them now, you can't tell me anything. You didn't help me when I need you. Uh -huh. I know who my father is. Right. I know where my help comes from. Yes. The Lord who made heaven and earth. Yes. I was praying with my friend on the phone today, Cla uh, Claudia. And she said, Evangelist Queen, you've been a witness to me and a role model. That's what I want to be. Because I was always a witness doing the devil's work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so she said, uh, in order for you to stay abstinent, because Solomon means I don't want no husband. Abstinent means I'm waiting on a husband. Right. So since I've been abstinent, uh -huh. and I told her, <laughs> it's because I love God. I love God more than I love a man. I love God more than I like a five-minute thrill. Hallelujah. Can we say hallelujah? Hallelujah. To God be the glory. God gets the glory for all the things we have done. And then when you get saved, you get cleaned up. You want everybody, come on, girl, go out of the way. I've been there, did that. Don't do it. Don't do it. Because what people don't know, when you do mess up, you got to start all over again. Now, I went to the 10th grade, and I failed, so I'm back to the kindergarten. I don't want to go back. You lose too much. You lose too much. You got to start all over again. Because when I was in CSC, 
26, 17 years ago, I wasn't a testimony. I was a testimony. <laughs> I'm calling it what it is. See, God didn't give me a pretty picture. I'm going to tell it like he told me. A testimony. Because a testimony can prove her stuff. With pure gold and God of her. Father God, I just come to you in the name of Jesus, God. God, I just thank you. I honor your name, God. I glorify you, Lord. Lord, I ask you to anoint my lips, God. God, I ask you that I would decrease, that you would increase, Lord. That you would get the glory. That you would get the praise. That you would get the honor. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to the book of Jeremiah. Amen. Jeremiah. Jeremiah was a prophet. Yes. Amen. I can read now. I can understand and break it down. And, whew, thank you, Jesus. Whew, I had to give him praise. I'm going to Jeremiah one fact because ain't nobody help me. Ain't nobody do me like Jesus. I tell my grandbaby, Bridget, all the time, people will let you down. Put no confidence in people, but put your confidence in him. I'm going to Jeremiah 1.5. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Jeremiah 1.5. Jeremiah was a weeping prophet. Ain't no wrong with crying. Sometimes you got to cry. Jeremiah 1.5. 1.5, it said, Before I formed thee in the belly of thee, and before thou hast come out the womb, I have sanctified thee. And I ordained, I ordained thee to be a prophet unto the nation. So even when I was in all that stuff, my Aunt Joanne used to say, when you get saved, God going to use you. I didn't understand what she said. You're going to be a testimony for the glory of God. I never understand. I could see her face just as clear. In 1997, I said, why don't you get me out of jail? She said, why don't you get saved? Yeah. Well, see, I wasn't ready in my mind. Because you can't fix yourself. So, when I was in my mother's womb, he knew that I was going to be an evangelist. He knew that he was going to have me winning souls. This lady prophesied in 96. God said you will leave prison and go back to Cleveland. You won't give the girls hope, but you, you won't give them dope, but you will give them hope. That was prophesied to me. But sometimes we run and we run and we run and we run and run till we get into an end where we don't have nowhere else to go. So you've got to surrender. God, I surrender. I come in. I told God, July 22nd, 1996, I'm done. I'm throwing all my shoes in. Because nothing I did work. Amen. So Jeremiah was a prophet. And so before he was even called to the nations, God knew he was going to use him. So even when you in your mother's womb, before you even, God already had a plan for us. God already had a plan for us and he knew. Who thought the loves would be saved? Come on. When I got out of jail, Pastor Greg just snatched me like that. I didn't tell people I would say he came to see me and they forgot to leave me a hundred dollars. I said, bless the Lord. He said, she really saved. <laughs> see, because I wanted to talk about Jesus. I didn't need no money. Amen. I didn't need no money. I had money. And didn't do nothing with it. But Jeremiah was a prophet born across the nation. And before all this happened, he was in his mother's womb. And it had been spoke already that he will be going across the nation preaching the gospel in season, out of season. That's Evangelist Gwen and Minister Carice. Amen. I'm moving right along. I'm going to Jeremiah 18.15. I won't be fair y'all long because we already had church. I'm just going to give you what the Lord told me. Amen. Jeremiah 18.5. Jeremiah. The word came from Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Arise and go to the potter house. Oh, oh, the title of this message, he's still shaping me and molding me. I'm still on the wheel. I'm still on the wheel now. He still got me on the wheel. He's still turning me. He's still turning me. He's still turning. I'm on the wheel now. I'm on the wheel. Keep that in mind. I'm on the wheel. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Arise, go down to the potter house, and there where I cause thee to hear my word. 
calls them that I went down to the powder house and behold what they work on the wheel, still on the wheel. Listen at this. And the vessels that made of clay were marred in the hands of the potter. So he made again another vessel and another. So this is what the clay, this is what God do to us. Shape us. Get that in. Get your mouth together. He's shaping us. He molded us for his glory. See, we got some things out of place. We got some bones out of place. They got to be put back in place. So when he shape you and he mold, and then you get back up. And guess what? He still keep putting you back in. Now, you don't want him to turn you over and let you go. Amen? Amen. But so he, he likes shaping me in, molding me in, turning me in. You got to make a left and you got to make a right. And you got to do this and you got to do this. But I'm knocking this in. I'm knocking that off. I'm knocking this off. I'm knocking your mouth off. I'm knocking your lying off. I'm lying your stealing off. I'm lying this I'm knocking the things off. So you can serve me. Yes. He got to shape us. Yes. He got to mold us. Yes. He got to clean us up. Yes. Clean me up, Lord. Clean me up, Lord. Clean me up, Lord. Clean me up. Ask God to clean me up. We get cleaned up for the right reason. It's because a lot of people have different motives. That's like even getting married. They ain't got the right motives. I tell God I'm going to wait on you. That way to be right. I'm going to wait because cause I had some things that I shouldn't have picked up and took home. Amen. Amen. He's shaking and molding me. I'm on the wheel. Yes. 